Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about blocks, groups, patterns, synced patterns, sync pattern overrides, and templates. I want to kind of demystify these concepts. I was talking to somebody the other day in the WP Minute Slack channel, and they were asking, you know, when, when do you use patterns? When do you use sync pattern overrides, templates? What's the point? Should we be putting patterns inside of our pages? Are we making templates with patterns? And I want to kind of break down this concept and visually show you here on the screen as quickly and as efficiently as possible. First things first, the block. The concept of the block is the probably smallest unit of a thing you can move around a page or a post. Uh, it could be as simple as a sentence or a word uh, or a paragraph. Uh, a block can be many different things, but we want to think of it as that single individual unit, and then the rest of our site is built around blocks, which includes patterns and sync patterns and templates. Now, the reason for the group concept, and I'm not going to go too deep into you know the designing of, of WordPress um, patterns and stuff like that, like why the, the concept of the group is there, but largely you want to put a bunch of blocks inside of a group when you're designing your templates or your patterns, right? This concept of the group does a whole bunch of other things like access, it gives you access to like margins and paddings and backgrounds, spacing, all this other stuff, right? From a design concept, I have other videos on that. But the idea is you make one individual thing with a block, you add another block, you put another block, and then you can turn that into a pattern, put it in a group, make it a pattern. So let's just take a look at one example here. So you can see on the right-hand side, there's two blocks, right? This is uh, the paragraph, two paragraph blocks, right? This is the smallest form of a thing, <laughs> of a con piece of content in our WordPress site. Now, a block can be something really complex. A single block could be anything. I mean, it really depends on the plugin or maybe theme that you're using. But if we add in a pattern, do a call to action. I'm using the 2024 theme, by the way. And when I insert this pattern and we look at the list view, number one, you can see that it is contained in a, a single group, which is named. So groups serve not only from a design perspective, but from an organizational perspective as, as well. You can rename groups. And within this group, we have, well, a bunch of little blocks. We have button blocks, list item blocks, uh, heading blocks, column blocks, and all of that is arranged into a pattern. Now, the pattern is great when you're writing a blog post and you want to drop in a call to action just like we see here. So you have this long form blog post. In the middle of that blog post, you say, oh, you know what? I have this, this thing for sale. I have this item for sale. I have this call to action. I want you to sign up for my newsletter. And as I'm writing this blog post, maybe it's um, about cars and I have a specific call to action about cars. But if I'm writing a blog post about sports, I have a specific call to action for sports. And you have a couple different patterns that speak to that call to action. Hey, if you want to sign up for our car newsletter, click here. If you want to sign up to our news, uh, our sports newsletter, click here. And that gives the content creator the ability to be much more dynamic, much more flexible while he or she is uh, making a blog post or creating a page on a website. Patterns also unlock that ability if you're in a web designer slash client relationship to say, hey, I've made patterns for you that do the thing. You don't have to go make it yourself. I made the pattern for you to do the thing you want to do. Here it is. Every time you're making that blog post, you can just drop it in right here. And that's amazing. And that's, that's very powerful than where WordPress was, let's say, five, ten years ago. Uh, the concept of patterns across a website very, very powerful, which is going to lead us into talking about synced patterns and now the new synced pattern overrides. We're going to get to templates, um, but hopefully you can see that the concept of smaller blocks makes up a pattern. And now what you can do with patterns is sort of the next frontier. I mean, we're kind of in it right now, but it's like the next frontier um, of WordPress, especially if you start, if you're an advanced WordPress user, you're thinking dynamic data that's, you know, further down the road in terms of core free WordPress. So let's go to the patterns uh, library, go to appearance, editor, and we'll look at all of our patterns. So this is 2024 theme. These are all the patterns um, that we have inside of the 2024 theme, right? So you can see these, you can browse these, you can add these, you can put these in your website.
Now, if I were to go and duplicate that call to action, we'll call it Matt's CTA. I have the option, I've covered this before, but I have the option now to uh, keep this pattern synced across the entire website. And what this unlocks, again, if you're in that web designer client relationship or you're working with a team of people on a WordPress site, you're on a marketing team, a publishing team, and somebody says, hey, we need that call to action. We want that call to action. We want you to design us this specific specific call to action. Um, what that allows you to do is, I'll go to my patterns, the one that I just created. When you have it synced, any changes you make on the what we'll call the master pattern right here, the synced pattern, those changes will go throughout the entire website. So if I have this particular synced pattern on a hundred blog posts on my WordPress site, and I come in here and I change this headline, for, for example, and I give it uh, a background, and I save it, that's going to change that pattern throughout the entire synced website. That's going to do all these patterns that are embedded or inside of a page or a post or even a template if it's a synced pattern. And I think we should be able to see that same change right here. You can see it right there. It's automatically uh, adjusted inside the preview. You can see that orange background. That's what a synced pattern does. If it's not synced, that means that the end user could change it at will. So it just, it is what it is. And if you have it on one blog post and you change it on that blog post, it's not changing across the entire site. The synced pattern allows one to make one change and it goes throughout the entire website. Again, can be useful depending on the context of how you know, you're managing your WordPress website. Either you're a web designer for customers or you're working with a team of people and sort of you're the one in, uh, <laughs> as the head of WordPress and they say, hey, please change this pattern. We want it to change up throughout our entire website. Let's talk about the synced pattern overrides. So I should be able to access it right here. If I click on this image, I pull up the sidebar and I go to advanced. The new thing that it has come to WordPress 6.6 uh, .6 is the overrides ability or feature. So I clicked on the image block. And again, just to show you, this is the image block. Again, the smallest unit of all things WordPress content or design. I clicked on the image block and I go to enable overrides. Now you give this a name. Uh, we'll call it CTA image because that's how creative we are. So we give this individual block a name. We call it CTA image. Doesn't matter. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to click enable. And you can't see it here just a little bit. There's a purple outline um, that sort of indicates that this is the, the synced override. It's, it's got a different color to it just so you're, you know that this is a synced override sort of feature that has been enabled. So I'm going to save this. I've actually never tested a synced pattern with a synced pattern override, but let's go to um, a page, add new page, test, and we will add that pattern in. So my patterns, Matt CTA, and just for a split second, you can see that hover, that sort of have like this purple hue that bounced in and, and, and faded away. Um, if we pull up the sidebar now, you'll see the only thing that we can change on this pattern is the image. Because what I've done is I've sort of locked it down to be that override part. That, like this image is the only part that can be overridden. <laughs> it's a kind of a weirdish name, but it's what we have right now. That sync pattern override allows us to click on image, uh, headline, text, button. I think those are the four or five that, that is enabled by default right now. And in the future, maybe it's, it's something else. But that allows you, again, in that relationship of a website designer for a client or team lead with a team of people using WordPress to say, you know what, now I've made this pattern, you can all use it. But I don't want you to break it. <laughs> I don't want you to change the background color. Uh, remember, in my example, I changed this background co color of this headline. I can't even click on that because this pattern is locked down. And every time I click on it, you'll see the little purple hue on the image just saying, hey, look, the only thing you can do in this pattern is change this image. Um, that's, again, a new feature that came to uh, WordPress 6.6. .6. And if I click on image, then I can pull in or if I click on replace, then I can go into the media library, upload another an image or pull it in from my media library. So the override feature allows us to 
Again, lock in those specific parts of a pattern, perfect for the web agency and uh, team scenario of using WordPress. Now, what's next? What's next when, when we look at blocks, patterns, sync patterns, sync pattern overrides? The next up is templates. So what do we do? Do we create, uh, for instance, if we go and leave this page and we go to add new page, WordPress prompts you with a bunch of patterns. And on this pattern, you're like, hey, this is, this is the home page. This is the business home. It's called the business home pattern <laughs> uh, and portfolio project overview. And I can click that. And now instantly, this entire page is built with a bunch of blocks. And I have all of this sort of customization I can now do on this sort of portfolio page. So you start to ask, well, what's the point of a template? A template will allow you to uh, or sort of sets the guardrails is the way that I see it. I'm not a developer. I'm just a power user of WordPress. I've been doing it for a while. I used to develop themes, but not anymore. When we go to editor and we go to the templates, you can see all of your uh, templates right here. And you notice really only the, the way that 2024 does it. The blog home has the uh, blocks and patterns already in it. So if I click into blog home, you can see this template has all of the patterns in it already. It's ready to go. It's, this is the template you assign as your homepage. Uh, and then you don't have to add in these patterns. You now come to the template to make that change. However, you could assign a page, uh, your homepage and then bring in, uh, where's the regular page pages, the pages pattern, <laughs> which again, sets the just the header, which is your whatever site logo navigation, the footer, which repeats that site logo name and navigation. And then in the middle, in this collection of groups is all of your content um, that you typically see on a page, title, featured image, and then content. So when you're creating templates, you're creating sort of the guardrails that your End users will put patterns and blocks and sync patterns and override patterns inside of. You're, you're saying, here's the header, here's the footer, and then maybe you assign other blocks and patterns in this template, but largely what you're defining is where the content goes. <laughs> like when somebody goes and creates a new page, you want to assign that, that template is already chosen, it's a page template, but you're saying, this is the section where content goes. We're gonna put content here and everything around it is already decided for you inside the template. That's why you don't see the featured image when you're making a new page. So if we go to new, oops, if we go to new page, command K, add new page, you don't see the featured image here. Uh, you don't see the header or the footer until you actually preview the post on the front end. If we go back to templates, are you using Command Palette? I use it a lot. It's an unsung hero, and I'm only saying that because, not only saying that because I got a feature uh, included in uh, in the Command Palette in this latest version. When you go back to templates, this is where you can add in, let's say, that call to action that I made. So we're going to add that call to action that I made, and we're going to move it up right below the content. And we're going to save. This is the page pattern, I believe. I'm editing the right one. So I'll edit the page pattern. We hit save. I've added my call to action that we made before at the bottom of the page. So we'll go new page. Close this. Now you don't see that pattern there. I'm going to say test page. This is a test post. We'll publish and view the page. Now you see my pattern is there. That's the guardrails. You don't see it in the editor, and this is why things can kind of get confusing here when you start talking patterns and templates and where do you use the patterns in the template. What I did is I said, I'm making my own custom call to action based on blocks, big pattern here, changed it, modified it the way that I wanted it, and then I placed it right below the content of all pages across my WordPress website. It's in the page template, and that's the guardrails that I mean about templates. Uh, because if we go and edit this page and we pull up uh, the template section, you can see it's, it's already got the pages template. That's the one that I edited. You can swap the template. 
You can click swap template and pick something else. But by default, it's using that uh, page template that I modified. And I can show the template and it'll show the template right here and you can kind of see how it works. But by default, that template is not shown and it's the guardrails for that page or post. And you can load this on custom post types, pages, regular posts. You can swap and interchange templates. But largely you're looking at templates as, again, the 50,000 foot view. This is the structure of my WordPress website. And here in the middle, in the content section, is where I'll allow the user to put their content and even their, their blocks and patterns, right? Depends on you know, what, what it is that they're doing. So lots of stuff, blocks, patterns, sync patterns, sync pattern overrides, and templates. We didn't talk about template parts. Template parts, uh, I'll keep it as basic as possible, which is generally the header and the footer of your website. It's saying, hey, that part of the template might change across many templates. Um, And even still, it's not as smooth as I would have hoped full site editing to be at this point. Um, but headers and footers are your template parts. And largely you can make multiple footers, multiple headers, and maybe swap those out on the templates. It's, it's a way to say, I don't want to recreate this every time, just like patterns. You're saying, I don't want to recreate this header in this footer section and maybe load and swap these more dynamically in the future. Template parts allows you to do that. It doesn't have to be a header and a footer. It can be part of a, of other areas of the template, but that's for 98% of us, that's what we're concerned of or over is header and footer in the template parts. This is a long uh, video, much longer than I I anticipated it to be. I hope it gives you a better understanding from the bottom up. Again, I'll repeat it. I've said it a million times, blocks, patterns, sync patterns, sync pattern overrides, and then templates. Maybe it should be a downward funnel. I I, I don't know. But if you found this video useful, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. Are you still confused of blocks, patterns, when to use it, what a template does? We kind of just scratched the surface here. I mean, this isn't uh, about developing your own custom blocks or your own custom patterns or your own custom templates. It's just how you use the software. This is how WordPress wants you to use the software from a real beginner point of view. 2024 theme, still love it. I covered the 20, the announcement of the 2025 theme. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, check out that video. And I will certainly be following the progression and the development of 2025 uh, as it uh, as it matures because it's going to be our new default theme in WordPress 6.7. Thumbs up, subscribe. See you in the next video.